It is conference final time in the National Hockey League with four teams standing. Who is in the driver's seat to take home the Stanley Cup? Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's edition of Locked On NHL. I am host of Locked On Oilers, Nick Zaris. That is Hunter Hody's lo- host of Locked On Penguins. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Today's episode very straightforward. First segment we'll touch Rangers Panthers. Second segment. Edmonton and Dallas. That series starts tonight. Third segment, we're going to talk Con Smythe. Hunter and I are going to do a little snake draft. We'll each take take five guys from the five the four remaining teams and see who ends up with the eventual Con Smythe winner. All right. Rangers, Panthers. Panthers win three nothing. Closer than three nothing. You add an empty net goal in there, two nothing. The goal that gets redirected for, by Lafreniere, Pasha Sturkin, two, two very weird goals. Uh, excuse me, one empty netter, one very weird goal, and then the first goal Shesterkin may or may not have seen. Really close hockey game. Not a lot of room. I know I saw a lot of people complaining, frankly, that it was a pretty boring game for stretches there in the middle because there just wasn't a lot going on. This was quintessential low event hockey. Neither team was really willing to make a risk to push to try and create more offense. So it was kind of a stalemate there for a while in the middle. Lots of zone time with no scoring chances. Or if there was a scoring chance, it was typically off of the rush. And then the defensive team would recover the puck and go back the other way. But that was good hockey. I I don't think if you're a Rangers fan, you should be particularly worried. Yeah, you'd like to defend home ice, but it was a close game. The final score, not really reflective of the actual game itself. Right. I think this game for a lot of stretches was two teams kind of feeling each other out. And I still think this is going to be a very long series overall. But another thing I really noticed as well, the Panthers really just don't give you anything in their own zone. The Rangers really had to work for their offense last night. And outside of a couple of stretches, Sergei Bobrovsky really didn't have to do that much. And he had a couple of pretty big saves in the third period, especially when the Rangers were on the power play. I thought he had one on Zabinijad, but I think that one was going wide anyway and also hit a Rangers player. But you know, he did have one later on Zabinijad, a really nice left pad save, save, excuse me, with the net empty. But he was really good when he needed to be. But outside of that, the Panthers really made his job a lot easier with the way they were playing in their own zone, the way they were blocking shots. That was a typical Florida Panthers playoff game. They get enough offense from their forwards, and then they lock it down with their defensemen. And the Rangers, they're going to have to make a few adjustments for game two to try and create more offense. I mean, I look at the data from last night on natural stat track at five on five. The Rangers only had 1.78 expected goals for only seven high danger chances, uh, only two of them in the third period. So th- they're going to have to really do a couple of things in game two if they want to avoid going back down to sunrise down O2 two in this series. But I really haven't seen the L- Rangers limited like that in a long time. So Full credit to the Panthers, but I don't think this is going to be a quick series in general. I I do think you'll see the Rangers adjust for game two, but I'm excited to see what happens in these next, hopefully, six games. A hundred percent. I think this is something that's historically been an issue for the Rangers, whatever permutation of it, whether it was a John Tortorella team and Lillian Vigneault team, a Gerard Gallant team. When they have been in these types of games where there's just not a lot of room, They get very easily flustered offensively where they're going to settle for those bad shots you don't really want to take from the point that get blocked and go the other way. They take that frustration shot as soon as they get in the zone that the goalie saves and then the play dies. Um, If the Rangers are going to break through, they're going to have to be really patient in the offensive zone, which means you're going to have to dump the puck in a lot more than you probably want to if you're a Rangers team. You're going to have to win those puck battles. 
and you're going to have to stay on Florida's defensemen, not let them break out. Because that's where I think your opportunity, if you're the Rangers, for offense comes from, is if you're making a Brandon Montour play defense, if you're making OEL play defense, I think that's where you have – if you're making Aaron Ekblad play defense, sure, Forsling is out there with him, and Forsling is arguably the best defensive defenseman in the entire league. But there are opportunities here, if you're the Rangers, to force their offensively inclined guys to play defense – wear them down, and pick your spots. That's really the key to breaking down a team that's really rigid defensively is you got to manipulate them somehow, whether that's moving your body or the puck. We talk about the same thing with power plays that aren't working. It's the same general principle here. You want to get that defense in conflict where guys are moving, where they're changing assignments because of the manipulation of where the puck is on the ice. And unless you do that, they're going to be able to hold that rigidness in the middle. They're taking away the cross seam pass. The rush opportunities are not there as often. And when the rush opportunities are there, they're not particularly dangerous. So for the Rangers to break through offensively, I think that's the key. I know there's going to be plenty of conjecture between now and tomorrow night about, well, maybe they should play Rempe. Maybe they should play Brodzinski or Blake Wheeler. I don't think changing the 12th forward is going to do a whole lot offensively because, frankly, they're not going to play enough. Like, sure, if you want to play Rempe, great. God bless. He's going to play six minutes. He's not going to help you score. If you want to say it's for something else, if you want to say it's to muck things up, to try and bait Florida into taking penalties, sure, you know, there weren't a lot of opportunities in the game last night, not a lot of power plays on either side. Okay, but don't tell me Rempe is going to be the reason they score more goals. If they win with Rempe in the lineup, it's more of a a coincidence than opposed to a direct change. Right. I, I don't think playing him seven minutes is going to do all that much for the Rangers. I mean, if Rangers fans or some of them that I saw want to argue that, oh, you can put him back in to get back at, I guess, Mikola for hitting Hedl late in the game. But I didn't really see that hit as too malicious, Nick. I feel like it was just someone finishing their check. I agree. Although, I understand Hedl has the massive concussion history, and I very much hope he's okay right now. And he, he's, he's hopefully going to play better throughout this series. But I didn't really see that as malicious at all. Another big thing, and I know this sounds so cliche to say, they got to get more traffic in front of Bobrovsky, man. I mean, he was always, brother. Shots. That is always the solution. Yes. When you can't get anything going offensively, you got to muck it up. You got to right. keep it simple, like we were just saying. Pucks in deep, move your feet, force the other team to get moving. Bob is beatable if you make him move. But yes. he had an easy night last night. Completely agree with you. They weren't getting traffic in front of him. He was able to see basically every shot that came through and all of them came just right to him. He didn't have to move at all. So if you can get someone like a Kreider to get traffic in front of him, make him move a little bit, I think the Rangers will be able to create more offense, especially that way. P- completely agree. The one last thing I want to say about this so far before we move on and then we touch on Edmonton Dallas. It's one game. These series, and I imagine this series is going to go six or seven games in either direction. It would not surprise me if it goes seven games. The Rangers played close enough where after one game, you don't feel particularly fatalistic. This isn't a case of like the Colorado Vegas series a couple years ago where Colorado scored like seven in the first game. And I think Colorado beat them in five games. It doesn't feel like that. You know, it doesn't feel like where Mark Andre Fleury gave up seven goals against Colorado. And very quickly, everybody looked around and goes, "Okay, yeah, Colorado's going all the way this year. It doesn't feel like that with Florida. Florida These are the two best teams in in the the conference. conference. For sure. Very closely What's the word I'm looking for? Just very closely matched. So yeah. the Rangers, they had that easy series against the Capitals. Same with the Panthers against the Lightning. That series was not that hard for them. You then it gets a little bit tougher for both teams in the second round. The Rangers got a bit of a scare from the Hurricanes, at least late in that series. Yeah. Same thing with Boston late in that series against the Panthers. Now you combine these two teams, the two best teams in the conference who have had pretty similar trajectories to get here. It's going to be really close throughout. And honestly, I would be stunned if we didn't get seven games here. Completely agree. And it's the time of year 
where the funky bounce is going to have a big impact. That's the thing about these low event games where it's only like 45, 50 total shots between both teams. Each of those shots is inherently more valuable because there's fewer of them in the game. And that's how you lose on bounces like that. You know, the, the Rangers had, I want to say two posts. They missed an open net on that rush in the second period where Lafreniere and Trocek had Bob down and out of position and they just couldn't put it in. So the Panthers got the bounces in game one. In a low event game, the bounces are more prone to dictating the overall outcome of the game. Coming up next, we are going to talk about the Oilers and Star Series, which kicks off tonight. Coming up next on Locked On NHL. Busy season in the sports world. We've got conference finals over in the NBA, here in the NHL. Major League Baseball is in full swing. The WNBA is in full swing. And if you want to get to a game, you should go check in with our friends at Game Time, the only app I use when buying tickets to go to events. Last minute deals where you can save up to 60% buying last minute tickets for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and any other event. Zone deals where you can save more if you say, choose just a section and let Game Time pick the specific seats. All in pricing, which shows the total up front with no surprise fees at checkouts. My personal favorite, the seat view, where it gives a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. The lowest price guarantee, or Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N N H L for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I want to thank everybody who's made Locked On NHL a part of their Thursday. Whether you're on the way to work, on the way home from work at the gym, on the way to school, or wherever. Thank you for taking some time to listen to Hunter and I. Dallas and Edmonton is perplexing because it feels like there's a bigger gap between these two teams than you're seeing on both the betting markets and the statistical markets. I was very confused to see the Stars' only slight favorites. Like, you can get you get the Oilers at like plus 105 where I feel like it should be a little bit closer to plus 120 for the series price and the athletic having it at 60 something percent Oilers to win the outcome. I know the athletics model doesn't account for goaltending, which is where the biggest single disparity in this series is, but this feels like a quintessential stars versus depth. And no, uh, ironically the stars are in the series, but they're not the team with the stars not as big of stars, I should say. I, stars have a talented team. But this really feels like unless somebody on Edmonton, McDavid or Dreisaitl, Bouchard goes supernova, they don't have the guys. It, it really feels straightforward that unless someone gives you a superhuman performance, you're probably out of here in five or six games because the goaltending situation is so rough. And once you get past that first defensive pair, it's really rough. I, the Oilers can make this a series, but barring – an incredible performance from one of McDavid or Dreisaitl. And McDavid definitely looks hurt. He's not engaging in contact as much. He's shying away from the middle of the ice a little bit more. So that's something to keep an eye on. I don't see a world where Edmonton can really do a whole lot. Unless, maybe Skinner's good. If Skinner's good, okay, maybe we have a conversation. But they're going to need a lot more to go right for them than Dallas is going to need for them to go right in this series. I would agree. You know, I read Dom's preview on The Athletic for this series and I felt like it was really well written. But even at the end of it, I went back again to the odds and I'm like, how are the Oilers favorites in this series? I hope that's not me putting out a hot take because I feel like the stars should be, I wouldn't say massive favorites, but they should be bigger favorites than what you're seeing, as you said, on the betting market and especially in Dom's preview as well. I'm taking the stars and six in this series just because their depth outshines Edmonton's by a lot. I think of even without three, hints, even yeah. without hints, who hasn't played since I think game five of their series and he's questionable. He's he day to, day. to come back. That's the big thing though. They, they need him if they want to win the Stanley cup this year, but I still look one through 12, at this lineup for the Stars, by far the deepest team in the league. I mean, for God's sake, again, they have Tyler Sagan as their third line center. They had Jamie Benn up with Wyatt Johnston on the And that's without Hintz. If Hintz plays, you get to kick Sagan out to the wing, and he has to do even less. 
Yeah, exactly. Just again, one through 12, by far the deepest team in the league. They can get contributions from everyone in the lineup. I will say, if Edmonton does want to win this series, they need McDavid to be better than where he was at the end of the second round series against the Canucks. I felt like the Canucks were doing a pretty solid job against them in those final couple of games. But A, the Canucks couldn't get much goal scoring just because the Oilers really tightened up defensively. And B, other players for the Oilers stepped up. I mean, for God's sake, we had a Cody CC goal <laughs> in game seven. And then you also had Evan Bouchard play really well. And he's been great all playoffs. For the Oilers, I think he should be getting a lot more Con Smythe love right now. And I think we'll probably have what's well, probably a nice tease for the final segment for today's show. But I, I look at this matchup still. The Oilers, they are very good at five on five, but the stars are just a little bit better. Special teams, we all know how potent the Oilers' power play is. There is a slight mismatch there. You look at the stars' penalty kill in the playoffs so far. And it's only at 69.2%. The Oilers power play, it's 37.5%. So if this turns into a special teams war, especially Oilers power play versus Stars penalty kill, that could tip the scales a little bit. But no hints for game one. Elliot just tweeted it 30 seconds ago. So oh, we did. OK, so yeah. so that's that's a big loss for the Stars. But if he can come back at some point in this series that should be able to push them up the edge a little bit. But then you get in goal, Nick, Jake Ottinger versus Stuart Skinner. I get that Skinner played well, those final two games, but I will also say that the Oilers played again, great defensively yep. in those final two games. You're going up against a guy in Ottinger who it feels like is getting a lot better as the playoffs go on. This is an uphill battle for the Oilers. The Oilers are still, I think at least very much, too top heavy for my liking. They don't have the depth that the stars do. And I hope this isn't a hot take either. After seeing who the stars played in the first two rounds, Vegas and Colorado, this just feels like the quote unquote easiest series for them so far en route to making the Stanley Cup final or potentially winning the Stanley Cup. So I'm going to take the stars. I don't think it's going to be in four or five. I don't think McDavid is going to allow the Oilers to lose that quickly. But I still don't know if the Oilers outside of their big, big guns have the horses to win this series. The ones the the matchup I'm most curious to see, I want to see how Dallas deploys their defense because they've been playing basically five defensemen for good chunks of the playoffs because Pete DeBoer just doesn't trust Nils Lundqvist enough to play. And that's why Heiskanen is averaging 28 and a half minutes per game. I don't it's know how going to get a lot of McDavid, I think, in this series. And I'm excited. I'll be curious to see if they do that or if they do the real, because they have a real shutdown pair in Lindell and yep. Tanev. So I, if it were up to me, I would probably be leaning towards playing those guys, Tan Evan Lindell, against Dreisaitl, who's been a, a bit better at five on five. McDavid, away from Dreisaitl since the Zadorov cross-check has not been great. They're still controlling play, and they're doing okay, but not nearly as dominant as they had been prior to that. So the goaltending, the biggest disparity between these two teams, if the Oilers are playing well enough that they can separate McDavid and Dreisaitl at five on five and have them driving two separate lines, then the Oilers' bottom six becomes a little bit more palatable because they don't have to play as much. And they did fine in terms of zone time and just not playing defense, frankly. But I think the key to this series for Edmonton is going to be transition as it is most of the time for them because Dallas has a really good four check and Dallas is not opposed to just playing ugly. They're fine with dump and chase, winning port board battles and cycling, going high to low. Whereas Edmonton wants to get clean regroups, break out with speed and go with possession. Edmonton's not well acclimated or not well situated, frankly, for a dump and chase battle. Coming up next, Hunter and I are going to draft two teams of five of potential Con Smythe winners, and we will see who takes home the trophy at the end of June. So stick around. There is no I in team, but there is one in Indeed, and that's the hiring platform you need to build yours. When you're hiring, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. 
Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills, Indeed's powerful hiring platform can help you do it all. We streamline hiring with powerful tools that find you matched candidates. With Instant Match, over 80% of employers get quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job, according to Indeed data from the United States. My favorite thing about Indeed is that everything is all in one place. You can look for jobs, you can take assessments, and conduct interviews all through the website. Even better, Indeed is the only job site where you pay for applications that meet your must-have job requirements. Join more than 3 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. Offer is good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash locked on. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. This is a fun time of year. This is where we get to see, and this is a very fun contradiction, we get to see who's actually watching the games. We, because when you start seeing the awards talk and you start seeing what the differentiation point between teams is, the people who know what they're talking about are actually watching the games. And then you have people who will not be named on national broadcasts who have their agendas already written in their head. And then whatever happens in the game, they just hammer the point home to reiterate what they feel is the truth as opposed to what the truth actually is. But I will, I will be generous. I will give you the first pick for our Con Smythe draft here. We're going back and forth. We each get five picks. Five picks. So I'm going to try to go at least one player on each team just because there's yeah. four teams left. And then the other player will be from, you know, so two players from one team, then three players yes. from the three other teams overall. My first pick for this one. I think for the Oilers, I'm going Leon Dreisaitl. I think okay. he has played at another level during the playoffs. He's been fantastic five on five or on the power play. He's played at times with McDavid, but he's also played a little bit more on his own line. But, you know, you, you look at how he's played so far, eight goals, 24 points in 12 games. So a point and a half per game at this point. I know McDavid was a little more quiet than normal to end that series against the Canucks, but Dreisaitl was not. He was fantastic all over the ice. He's been there when the Oilers have needed him throughout the playoffs. And even though at times he's also looked a little bit banged up as well, it really hasn't mattered because I think you look at these four teams right now, I think Dreisaitl has been the best player in the playoffs so far. He's my number one pick for this one. Good choice. Interesting to go with a player who's going to be an underdog in his conference final, but understandable. I'm going to take Matthew Kachuk, who has gotten better as the playoffs have gone along. Scored last night. I want to say he, I think if I remember correctly, I saw he has 12 points over the last two conference finals. And remember, they swept Carolina in four games last year. So as the lights get brighter, Kachuk has been better. Hopefully this year he doesn't break his sternum again in the final and be rendered, div rendered relatively ineffective. But Kachuk, Kachuk is uniquely situated in that he's going to be probably the best player on the ice most of the time he's on the ice against the Rangers. And he's got that miserable POS to him that you need from your star players. And the Rangers star players don't have, you know, when you're out there and you're one of the best, if not the best player on the ice, and you realize you can kind of be get away with stuff because nobody's going to check you for it. I think Kachuk's going to have a really good conference final. And frankly, I could see him faring very well against the Stars. I like that one too. Um, my second one, that is going to be, I'm going to go out west again, Wyatt Johnston. You know, seven goals, 11 points in 13 games so far. I know a lot of players on the Stars have been great throughout these first two rounds, but I think Johnson has been their best player, bar none. And I think that legend is only going to grow in round three against the Oilers. He's given them plenty of outstanding moments so far. He's really come into his own during the playoffs. It really hasn't mattered what line you put him on. He's still driving offense to an elite degree in the playoffs. Give me Wyatt Johnston for my second pick. Johnston's a really good player. I'll be curious to see if he's able to keep up the point production because ultimately, unfortunately, that's what drives a lot of the conversation for these awards because that's who votes on the awards. Um, my second pick, 
I've been going back and forth if I want to do a Ranger or a Star here. I'm going to go with Shesterkin here just because I feel like if the Rangers get there, Trocek has been their best forward, but I don't know if he's going to continue to put up the more than point per game. And I feel like if you don't have the slam dunk guy who puts up 24 points in like 16, 17 games, you're probably not going to get it, especially when Shesterkin's as good as he has been. A little bit of a difficult game for him last night, but neither of the goals is terribly his fault. He probably should have just stayed in the net on the second one as opposed to chopping it into the corner, which is ultimately why Lafreniere had to regroup and made the play he did. But I'll go with Shesterkin. Yeah, that, that's a good pick for Shesterkin because that was probably going to be mine once I got to the Rangers. But I'm going to go to the Panthers here. Give me Sasha Barkov with the way he's played at both ends of the rink. You know you're getting point-per-game production from him offensively, but it's his play in the defensive zone that's really been standing out throughout these playoffs. And what was really good in Game 1 against the Rangers, the Rangers couldn't get a lick of offense when he was on the ice. He was also great on the penalty kill. Once again, he gets into shooting lanes, blocks those shots. He's able to get clears pretty easily. There's a reason why he's the best two-way center in the league, and you've seen that on full display throughout these playoffs. I give me Barkov for my team for the Conn Smythe. Okay. I'm going to take Heiskanen from the stars. I was debating going Ottinger, but I feel like Heiskanen playing the minutes he is on the team he is. And I feel you got, you got their point leader in Johnston and none of their other forwards have as gaudy of point totals. Ottinger is probably a little bit of a safer pick than Heiskanen. But I feel like he's doing so much for them that he's got he's got to be a consideration for their candidate for the award. I mean, that's how you kind of have to game out the strategy for this is which two or three guys from each team, which team do you think is most likely to advance? I think Dallas is more likely to advance than Edmonton. You got the first pick. So it's either Ottinger or Heiskanen. And I feel like Heiskanen has been great these playoffs and he plays such a difficult role for them. That's a good one, too. I have to do the Rangers now just because I haven't made a Conn Smythe pick for them yet. And you kind of hinted at it earlier. Give me Vince Trocek. I was honestly really considering going Panarin or Zibanejad. But with the way Trocek has played in these playoffs, he's been at a little bit of a higher level compared to those two. He's very much living up to his contract right now. I mean, just looking at the offensive production, six goals, 14 points, 11 games. But his underlings have also been really solid throughout as well. He's been good at five on five. He's especially been great on the power play. He's been great around that net front area as well. And he's given the Rangers quite a few sparks during the playoffs so far. So give me Trocek with the way he's playing. I think if Fox had been playing at a higher level, I would go with him. But 100%. He hasn't been he's good. Hurt. He's hurt. He hasn't been good. Yeah. He's only got four points through. I, they played their 12th playoff game last mm-hmm. night. I think 11th playoff game last night. He hasn't been very good. Just being a blunt in my assessment. He's OK on the power play, but at five on five, especially playing with Lindgren, who's been frankly awful if it weren't for true but Lindgren would definitely be their worst defenseman I'll be curious to see if the Rangers consider any defensive switch ups uh I was gonna you know I'll do Evan Bouchard I was gonna say Zach Hyman but goals not points because point points go burr ultimately is the uh, unless Zach Hyman scores like a Stanley Cup winning goal and he leads the playoffs in goals it probably has to be Bouchard You could maybe say McDavid because the points are there, but the goals aren't. So whichever one of those guys you end up with is probably not a bad bet because the the numbers will be there. But I feel like Bouchard has frankly been the star's best player other than Dreisaitl. When he's not on the ice, they only score like 34% of the goals. When he is on the ice, they score like 61% of the goals. He's... He's undoubtedly the reason the Oilers are this good this year. Yeah, The Oilers have been okay and a playoff team for a few years now. The reason they're a serious cup contender, as opposed to just like a first round, maybe a second round exit, is the fact they have a real number one defenseman for the first time in the McDavid era. Yeah, he's been fantastic throughout. And I figured one of us was going to take Bouchard at some point during this little snake draft. But my final pick... I'm going to go back to the stars and I'm going to take Jake Ottinger just for my goalie quota, I guess. His regular season I thought was fine overall. He wasn't one of the five to seven best goalies in the league, I think, in my opinion. But he was still good enough, obviously, to get the stars in the playoffs. And I do think when he's on his game, 
he is one of the best goaltenders in the league. But still, his regular season was pretty pedestrian compared to past years, but he's turned it up a notch in these 13 games in the playoffs. 8-5 and five record, 2.09 goals against average, 9.18 save percentage. He's playing his tail off every single night for the Stars, and he's playing at, honestly, an elite level right now. He's, he's one of the – you can make an argument – I don't know. Yeah, he's not better than Shesterkin, but he's squarely in that 2-3 range, him and Bobrovsky for second or third best goaltender remaining in the Stanley Cup playoffs. And as I discussed in the second segment, I think he's going to be a big difference for the Stars in this series against the Oilers with the way he's played, with the amount of big-time saves he's made when the Stars have really needed them. Give me Ottinger for my final pick. I've been debating who I was going to pick between to win the Stanley Cup because that's ultimately going to be who you pick the second guy from. And it would be disingenuous of me to come off of the Rangers now. I picked them to beat the Stars in the Stanley Cup final. And I don't know who I would take from the Stars. And I just... I don't think I could take Bob. I could see Florida beating the Rangers, but if Florida were to win, I already got Kachuk and you got Barkov. So I I think I'm going to have to go with the Ranger. And I'll go – I will go with Zabinijad. Even though the five-on-five production isn't there, the counting stats still look well enough. And there's this perception amongst hockey writers that Zabinijad's an elite defensive center, even though he isn't. So I will hope that plays into my hand here. And hope one of us has at least at least one of us has the guy who ultimately wins the award. That's my hope here from the 10 guys we've picked. Uh, that'll do it for today's edition of Locked on NHL. Make sure you are subscribed wherever you get your podcasts or over on YouTube. Hit the alarm bell to get a notification whenever new episodes go live. Hunter and I will talk to you next Thursday. Until then, enjoy the Stanley Cup playoffs.